Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle Discourses 102. This is uh, the 5 and the 3, also known as Pan Katya Sutta. Uh, just a disclaimer beforehand, that this is one of the most difficult discourses that I have found uh, till whatever I have read in Middle Discourses. Like I have com completed from like one, 1 to 102 now and also completed some other discourses of linked and uh, uh, numerical discourses but this is like really difficult this was really difficult for me to understand i took two to three readings of this discourse to just get a sense and um, this book uh, pressing the pure honey uh, by cheryl rogers that also helped me to get a perspective uh, so gratitude to her okay so whatever little i have even i have been able to grasp from this discourse that i am presenting to you uh, i suggest that you also do the reading like for all the discourses that I say, there is the link to the discourses always given in the description. Uh, gratitude to Sutta Central for making them available. So you can also read the discourse at your end. But the basic gist I am bringing to you. Now, please understand the context. At Buddha's time, there were many other sects and many other theories that were that were prevalent. One was the Advaita Vedanta, which is that there is a permanent self. Um, then there were... Ajivika, then there were the uh, Jain uh, uh, ascetic Mahavira was there. So in this discourse, Buddha like kind of clarified uh, various wrong notions about the self, right? See, understand one thing that uh, Buddha said very clearly that there is no permanent self. There is basically the conditions that are arising. It's like, again, giving an example to you uh, to, so that you can understand better. Think of it that a fan is running full speed, right? When the fan is running full speed, you will see, you will think that it is, there is a fan that exists. But there is no fan. There are blades of that fan. So similarly, Buddha said that there are only the various five aggregates, body, feelings, mind, volitions and consciousness. These various conditions keep arising and they give at a time, at one point in time, they give this false illusion, false impression that there is a permanent self. Buddha said that till the time you are into this wrong notion of a permanent self, till till the time you have that wrong notion, you will not be able to liberate because you think that you have a permanent self and you will keep attaching to things, thinking that they will give you happiness. You will keep having this wrong notion that I will, you know, that desires. And that because you think yourself as a permanent thing and those desires will, you know, keep you in the samsara. You will keep rebirthing. So once you get this understanding that this is only the conditions that were arising, there is no me, right? It's like there is no ego. There is only the conditions that are arising because of some higher law, law of karma or some higher law. You cease, you become disillusioned, right? You stop kind of attaching yourself to things because there is no, no Abhinav, right? There is no you. This is all just happening within you. Greed arises, you see a beautiful woman outside and the lust arises in you. You see some money outside or some opportunity, business opportunity outside and greed arises. So these things are dependent. Some Everything is dependent on each other. The wrong view of the self means that I am a permanent self and I keep on you know, getting rebirth every time. right? And, and those things keep us in samsara. Now... Buddha says at the start of the, uh, this thing, mendicants, there are some ascetics and Brahmins who theorize about the future, about the future and assert various hypotheses. Now, Buddha kind of said that there are so many theories that are available. Now, these mendicants, these ascetics, they have not realized, they are not realized. What they are doing is that they have just been told something and they are just following it through either faith or through oral transmission. There are five, six ways, Buddha said. Somebody told them and they are following that. Now, what are the theories? That the self is percipient. Percipient means a self can perceive. That means a self is percipient and, and is well after that. That means even after a death, there is a self that exists. Some, some say self is non-percipient. Some say self is neither percipient nor, uh, nor percipient. Some assert annihilation, eradication of an existing being. Others propose extinguishing in the uh, present life. Right? So, Buddha is saying that there are so many various, various theories that are available. Right? Now, Buddha is in taking every theory one by one and saying at the end of the para, 
Buddha says, all, and this is very, very important, friends, this is the line which is important. All which is conditioned, all that is conditioned and coarse, I'm again seeing this. All that is conditioned and coarse, but there is a cessation of conditions. That is real. So Buddha says, Buddha says that you hold whatever theory about the self, about the future, about the past, but know the important thing that whatever is conditioned. See, everything in this samsara, Buddha says, is conditioned. Right? Everything is conditioned will cease. One day it will cease. That is real. Right? That is the real thing. That everything that arises dissolves. Everything. This is the nature in this samsara. Nothing is permanent. Everything. So that understanding is real. And Buddha says, understanding thus and seeing the escape from it, realized one has gone beyond all that. That means Buddha is trying to say that other ascetics and Brahmins, they only have this theory in their mind and they practice according to the theory. But a realized one, that is the Buddha himself, realized through his practices and at, at the time of his enlightenment that all conditions cease. They are dependent on something else, which is the knowledge of dependent origination. Everything arises because something else arises. Everything else ceases. Everything ceases because something else that is there ceases. So when Buddha realized that, he got um, awakened. Buddha is basically saying that you have to awaken. You, ha you cannot just hold a theory in your mind and walk. Right? You have to... And this is what Buddha says. I awaken. Knowing this thing, I was able to escape. Right? So from these wrong notions. Right? So Buddha may have also encountered entered lot of wrong notions. So he practiced ascetism, extreme practices like the Jains. And then he realized that all these practices are wrong. These practices don't lead to Nibbana. He practiced under various teachers, two teachers, Alara Kamla and Udatta Ramaputta. And they also took him to very deep states of concentration. And he realized that those concentration deep states, they also is not able to free him. But when Buddha realized that we can be free with the understanding that anything that is arisen will fall, then the Buddha got free. And this is like as a lay people, as practice, people practicing you and me, what is kind of the learning for us is practicing Vipassana, Vipassana meditation. Vipassana is in this moment, be mindful, 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 mindful of this moment. Every moment be mindful, right? And then keep, keep seeing what is a, over time, over time, over time as you practice, you one fine moment you will really get this understanding that this is just arising and passing away. Nothing lasts. This is all impermanent. Whatever is has to arise will fall away. Once that knowledge becomes an, a, you realize that knowledge. See, I have not realized the knowledge. I am in my path. Right? So whatever I am also discussing is like a conceptual thing. Right? So once you, we realize this thing, then we are free. We are free. We are free from these bonds of the samsara. On an experiential basis. So it's like, you know, I always give this example of, uh, you know, uh, like uh, martial arts. You know, they, they have this brick and they just cut the brick. They just, you know, cut the brick into two by the sheer power. So that power that they have, they built it over time, 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 made, made the mind so concentrated that they are able to do in one go. Right? So they have a slab. A concrete slab and they just watch it for a moment and then they just you know and that slab breaks up so what basically we have to do is develop our meditation and our mindfulness practice to such an extent that we realize this understanding right okay so Buddha continually states the only one thing all that is conditioned and coarse but there is a cessation of conditions that is real right so then Buddha talks about that, you know, it's simply, if you, they have the self and cosmos are not eternal. Buddha, again, in another discourses, Buddha also said, do not waste your time and energy in unnecessary metaphysical questions. God exists, God doesn't exist. Buddha says, just watch this whole thing that is happening within you. Right? Various states that are arising. Right? You will know for, for yourself 
that you can even not hold a thought properly in your head you can a particular sensation also you cannot experience pleasurable painful whatever even a pain pleasurable, pleasurable sensation you cannot experience so that is we have to look within ourselves right so buddha says that lot of people do from various faith endorsement oral tradition reasoned contemplation acceptance they just keep having those views and those views actually bind them it is called clinging to a view right so we do not we should not cling to any view even i think buddha would say that not even cling to this view that you know all these things are arising and falling but just do our practice so if we take buddha as our teacher we will do our practice and hopefully we will arise at some conclusion right like for example buddha is giving this example of um, analogy of sunlight that some people some ascetics and brahmins they they even let go of the theories okay you even let go of the theories they shed the fetters of sensuality that means they do not have desires and sensuality they enter and remain in seclusion right and they get a lot of rapture lot of peace but then the rapture also rapture of seclusion also ceases and sadness arises and when sadness ceases the rapture of seclusion arises it's like how the sunlight fills the space when the shadow leaves or the shadow fills the space when the sun sunshine leaves right so all these things keep on happening so you cannot even kind of attach yourself or cling yourself to the pleasure of seclusion or deep concentration that will also leave then buddha gives an example of like some ascetics they even let go of everything sensuality going beyond even the rapture pleasure of the flesh neutral feeling they still regard themselves as i am peace at peace i am extinguished i am free of grasping that means even in the deepest state they still have this one thing about i i am at peace i am extinguished right and that prevents them but now understand this but the realized one this is the last i'm almost the last para but the realized one has awakened to the supreme state of supply, sublime peace that is liberation by not grasping after truly understanding the six fields of contacts origin ending gratification drawback and escape this is what the buddha said satisfied the mendicants approved for the buddha said so what buddha is liberated now what we do in vipassana is we keep being mindful of the states that are arising without grasping without grasping or running away from that particular state and over time we realize that these are all just conditions they will arise and fall right so over time we realize this whole fact that this is going to this understanding that the conditions will arise and fall by themselves right so i hope this was a, the my sharing was of some use to use provide you some context in your um, in your study of the sutras i hope uh, it uh, help in some way do share your insights and thoughts in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddha